Well, it's a special day at the shop because today we are prepping my bus for spray foam. That's right, we've got some pros prepping for other pros, so you know the outcome is gonna be fantastic, right? My bus, if you will recall, we just finished framing it, and today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of pickup framing, but mostly trying to cram as much wiring and infrastructure into the walls as we can before our date with Destiny tomorrow morning. In this video, I wanna show you all the little steps and tricks that we've developed to make sure the spray foam goes only where you want it and not where you don't and so that you're not left scratching your head days later wondering where the wires ended up that you ran and did you run enough wires and what wires should you have ran should you even have ran wires how about plumbing i don't know we're going to talk about it today so don't go anywhere that means stay tuned and while you're at it hit the subscribe button because today i'm showing you how the pros prep for the spray foam pros try saying that three times fast All right, let's go ahead and go on inside the bus and I'll show you how we get ready for a professional spray foam job. The first thing you'll notice is masking and a lot of it. We like to use some heavy duty, this is two mil plastic drop cloth and use Gorilla Tape and tape up the seams and seal off this entire cockpit area. Anywhere that that spray foam gets, you can scratch off the piece of foam, but it will leave behind a shadow that's virtually impossible to remove. So anywhere you don't want spray foam, make sure you have it masked really well. The next thing we do is we go ahead and we mask over all of our windows. Again, for obvious reasons. Following that up, we'll go ahead and put covers on all of our outlet boxes. And we'll make sure that everything that's in the wall is right where we want it because once this is sealed up, my friends, it's not going anywhere. The next thing we do is we go ahead and lay down butcher paper all over the floors. There will be overspray. There's just gonna be a whole lot of things that contribute to the mess, and this makes cleanup a breeze. The last thing we do is we go ahead and tape up all of these wires and any of these danglers like you see here, we go ahead and bag them so that they're not gonna get any foam on them. Hey, Chuck, if you encase these conductors, in spray foam, they're gonna get hot and that heat's not gonna have anywhere to go and you need to derate these conductors when they're encased in spray foam. But the truth is, my friends, I have done the research. The truth is that all Romex, to my knowledge, does not have to be derated if it is encased in spray foam, in particular, this Anchor stuff. So I've thought about it, don't worry, we're gonna be just fine. Up in front here, because this bus is a Thomas, it means that our wiper motors are actually above the windshield. Well, since we've got three inches of foam going everywhere, we surely don't want to encase our wiper motors in foam. So we go ahead and box these off with cardboard. We'll peel the cardboard off later, but that keeps foam out of our wiper mechanism. Since we're gonna be filling our wheel wells with foam, we build our boxes around them, but we leave the lid off so that the foamers can easily go in and make sure we get two inches all around our wheel wells. Once you have the entire bus physically prepped for spray foam, you wanna go ahead and if you're indoors, crank up your heaters. If you're outdoors, get a heater in here because the warmer you can get the substrate, that is what you're spraying the foam onto, closer to 75 to 80 degrees, the happier the foam will be. It's really important, especially as those temperatures dip, to do everything you can to bring that up. If you're spraying indoors like us, you want to make sure that you protect anything around the opening of the door and anywhere that you have an opening here where foam could potentially squirt out, you want to make sure that you go inside and tape around all of those seams. Spray foam job is done. Aldo did an amazing job in here. He got me out really pretty much just flush with where I had, had everything framed. And that's great because we really want to make sure that we have enough covering all of the ribs, which you can't even see anymore, but there's a rib here 
and the rib here so that we get the effects of our vapor barrier and we don't have any condensation issues because you won't have condensation issues if you cover everything with foam. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna grab a scraper and a saw and just cut and trim back any high spots, get all this masking out of here and uh, you know, really start enjoying ourselves in this bus. Look at this, it's just freaking gorgeous. The man did a fantastic job. I couldn't be more pleased. And it's really the mark of a good spray foam installer how little excess material remains to be trimmed off. I mean, it's waste, it's more work to trim, and so the best installers are the ones who go out of their way to spray only what is needed. And that's exactly what happened here, and he got great coverage. And I'm so excited to get this trimmed completely flush, get the masking out of here, because then it's time to really start on the build out and I can begin to install my finished surfaces. That's a huge turning point in a build. Um, I feel like it's about 60% of the work to get to insulation. And then from here, you're just cruising, baby. So before I get started doing that, I wanted to cover a couple of tools I like to use. First one is a scraper. Nothing too special about that. Just come in and use that to do the light removal, just scraping it off the strapping. And the other one is a pull saw, or I think people will call it a Japanese saw. But uh, it's great because it's got some bend in it. So, you know, if you're working across the ceiling, you just ride that strap and work it back and forth and you can get it as flush as you want. Now, I think I was talking before about how one of the reasons I really like using a commercial spray foam installer to do this is because the foam that you get is a lot harder. Well, the trade-off is trimming this is a lot harder <laughs> than the DIY kits. So I'm gonna put some tunes on, get rocking, and uh, peel this bus out of its spray foam cocoon. Well, this fellow's been hard at work getting his bus trimmed out. And as you can see, the spray foam really adds a ton of structure to the bus. So I've got it trimmed here in the corners. I'm gonna have to probably go back in and touch this up with a scraper as I go through and install my wall panels everywhere. But this is the great, this is exactly the level of fill that you want, just about flush with the straps. And I mean, these straps, everything is so freaking solid now. I mean, what a huge advantage to doing this system. You can also see now, you know, my AC box, all the places where I had stubbed out in my wiring video, which you should go check out. This is for my um, Victron Touch display that goes and integrates with the rest of my Victron equipment there. All the wheel wells, we got the windows. I still got to put that window in. Look at this, and then up here also, we got our wiper motors, fresh wires that are gonna be hooked up to them for easy access there. Spray foamed around my upper window that I added. And this thing is pretty much ready to be moved into actually and just start keeping me warm. I love this stuff. What an amazing insulator. How could you ever go with anything else? I did want to touch on one thing, and that is, if you'll notice, I did not run any of my plumbing beforehand. And I do everything I can to keep the plumbing out of the walls and keep it on this side, because keep in mind, if you have a wall and it's filled with insulation, your pipes are in the middle, and it's cold outside, you're gonna get half as much insulation between the pipe and the outside where it's cold. And then you're gonna be insulated between the pipe and the inside where it's warm. So it's gonna be really working against you. So I always try to run my pipes outside of my walls wherever possible. And in here, all of my plumbing will be going along this wall. I've got my kitchen sink, toilet, bathroom sink, shower, all right here. And because I'm raising the floor of my bathroom, that's the footprint of it there, I'll actually be able to route my plumbing under the floor there, back to the water tank and water heater, which will be here. And so that means all my plumbing's out of the walls. But if you've got to do it, you've got to do it. I understand. Just try to bias your pipes, you know, as far to the outside of the wall or inside of the wall as you can. That'll get you much better performance. Well, as you can see, I have spent a lot of time scraping and trimming this bus. I'm still not done yet, 
but I gotta get moving, so I just wanted to wrap things up here, show you a little bit of what the almost finished product looks like, and just reiterate some of the things I love most about spray foam. You get the vapor barrier built in, you get the highest R value per inch, and you get this structural addition of basically encasing your entire build in foam. All of this strapping in these walls, they are solid as a rock, and they're not going anywhere. And that's what you want going down the road. This insulation is not going to settle into the wall cavities, I'll tell you that much. I hope this video was useful to you. I hope it will help you get the most bang for your buck out of your spray foam job, should you choose to go that way. And if anybody out there has any other tips or tricks or comments, put them down below so we can share some information. That's what we're here for, right? My name's Chuck Cassie. Thank you for watching. We'll see you here next week.